Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss multiple choice questions in thoracic anatomy from question 1 to question 10. The answers will be in the description of this video as well as the link of the reference books for your kind information. Let us solve the multiple choice questions. Question number one, a 13 year old girl is admitted to the hospital with severe dyspnea and bronchospasm. Which of the following nerves overactivity in an asthmatic patient causes bronchospasm? Okay, intercostal nerve, phrenic nerve, greater splanchnic nerve, lesser splanchnic nerve, vagus nerve. So, this is an autonomic function and this is a this is a parasympathetic activity because of bronchospasm and deep sneer. Bronchospasm is also associated with excessive secretion from the bronchial glands. So, there will be difficulty in breathing that is deep sneer. and this is parasympathetic activity and the nerve is what? Nerve is the Vagus nerve. Answer is the vagus nerve. Okay. A 22 year old apparently healthy man came to a family physician's office for regular checkup. On the surface of the chest, the physician was able to locate the apex of the heart. What is the location of the apex of the heart? At the middle of the manubrium sternum, at the sternal angle at the gyphoid process, at the left fifth intercostal space medial to the mid clavicular line, at the left eighth intercostal space lateral to the mid clavicular line. So apparently healthy, that means his heart has not been enlarged. It is not a case of cardiomegaly, he is only 22 years old, healthy man. So for his regular checkup, so the heart is also healthy like him apparently healthy so the the location of the healthy heart is where it is at the left fifth intercostal space medial to the mid clavicular line okay so we got that there is the usual location in case of dextrocardia it will be on the other side in case of situs inversus it may be on the other side there is very rare condition. So usually this is the site of a person's apex beat, apex of the heart. And this, this is also the site of point of maximum impulse, left fifth intercostal space, medial to the mid clavicular line. Okay. Question number three, a 24 year old man got a gun short gunshot with damage to the left greater splanchnic nerve which of the following ganglions contributes in the formation of the greater splanchnic nerve t1 and t2 sympathetic ganglions t2 and t3 sympathetic ganglions t1 and t2 dorsal root ganglions t3 t4 dorsal root ganglions t5 to t9 sympathetic ganglion so how greater splanchnic nerve is formed by T5 to T9 sympathetic ganglion they contribute in the formation of the greater splanchnic nerve so answer should be E okay so we are here now Identify the indicated structure that is indicated by yellow arrow here. Okay, this is from Atlas of Anatomy and Gilroy first edition. And I have modified a little bit to make the question. So identify the indicated yellow arrow structure. What is that structure? What is this structure? Okay, this is the structure, it is going here opening at the junction between the of the left subclavian vein and left internal jugular vein here it opens this 
content of the abdomen here enters the thorax through the aortic opening of the diaphragm and it is a content of posterior mediastinum, superior mediastinum and root of the neck. So what is that structure? A zygous vein, internal thoracic vein, left vagus null, accessory hemiazygous vein, thoracic duct. What is the structure? This is the thoracic duct. It opens the junction between the left internal jugular vein and left subclavian vein. It is formed in the abdomen as a continuation of cisterna chile, passes through the aortic opening of the diaphragm. It is medial to the azygous vein. So answer should be thoracic duct. This is the thoracic duct. Identify the indicated structure. The structure is indicated. So you can indicate it now. Okay. Suppose this is the structure okay so this is the structure what is this structure okay so if we consider this is the structure what is this structure okay identify the indicator structure anterior intercostal artery internal thoracic artery musculophrenic artery superior epigastric artery Posterior intercostal artery. What is that? This is the internal thoracic artery. This is on the right side, right internal thoracic artery. That is a branch of the right subclavian artery. What is this? This is the left internal thoracic artery, branch of left subclavian artery. Okay. Musculophrenic artery and Superepigastric artery are terminal branches of the branches of the internal thoracic artery, like superepigastric arteries here, and we we'll also get the musculophrenic artery here. Okay, musculophrenic artery, superepigastric artery. This is the internal thoracic artery, branch of subclavian artery. This is another internal thoracic artery. <coughs> This artery has a lot of clinical importance, especially in case of coronary artery bypass grafting. This artery is commonly used to bypass the blocked coronary blood vessel. So it is essential in CABG, coronary artery bypass grafting. Okay. We have other blood vessels like that of the Great saphenous vein, radial artery, also used in coronary artery bypass grafting, but this is most commonly used in CABG. Okay, so we are here now. We have done here. Okay, we have done that part. Now try here, question number six. A 65 year old man has a myocardial infarction with possible myonecrosis of the indicated area of the heart. Indicated area means this area. Okay, if we go there. Okay, this is the area that is indicated. This is the area that is indicated. Okay. So, this is the area, indicated area of the heart that is not getting blood supply from here somewhere blocked here that is causing ischemia and necrosis of this part of the heart wall and that is a common site of myocardial infarction okay so a 65 year old man has a myocardial infarction with possible myonecrosis of the indicated area of the heart this is that area which of the following artery is most likely blocked? Okay, so right coronary artery, this is the right coronary artery, right marginal artery, okay, circumflex artery, this is circumflex artery, okay, left anterior descending artery, this is the left anterior descending artery, and posterior interventricular artery is located posteriorly, not shown here. So, 
what is the artery that is blocked in this scenario answer should be lad that is the left anterior descending artery this is a branch of the of the left coronary artery and also it is also called left anterior descending LAD or it is also called anterior interventricular artery okay so this is a common site of blockage and in many cases this is the number this is a cause we may have multiple blockages, but this is in most cases around 45 percent cases this is the only artery that is blocked in myocardial infarction but people may have three four artery may be blocked together in the same scenario okay we got that now we'll go to this this is a the, we'll learn question number seven eight nine ten we'll identify the chest x-ray so let us identify this is a chest x-ray PA view and this x-ray has been taken from microsoft powerpoint creative common online picture okay so let us start identification what is my right atrium right atrium is d this is the right atrium it forms the right margin of the heart okay this is the right atrium and so it should be d here we'll write d okay apex of the heart what is the apex of the heart this is the apex of the heart formed by the left ventricle this is the left ventricle okay so we can we can write it here right atrium is d okay apex of the heart is a okay apex of the heart is a then right costodiaphragmatic races right costodiaphragmatic races is the here is the right costodiaphragmatic races this is the races this is the dependent part of the pleural cavity fluid may be collected here another space is here left costo this is the diaphragmatic races okay this is the b right costodiaphragmatic races so this is this part we can write it here okay so we can write here right diaphragmatic races b okay left of the diaphragm is this is left of the diaphragm this should be here we can write it here c okay so these are the matching we have other thing like trick here usually midline here okay then this is the aortic knob or aortic knuckle or arch of aorta underneath that we'll get the pulmonary like this okay this is the arch of the aorta here arch of the aorta underneath this we'll have the pulmonary trunk this pulmonary trunk is here okay you can make it a little bigger so we can easily understand okay so here is the arch of the aorta aortic knob in the x-ray then this is the pulmonary trunk is the pulmonary trunk is here okay pulmonary trunk is two branches left pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery then this is the apex of the heart we can say this is the apex of the heart apex of the heart we'll try that this is the apex of the heart okay apex of the heart this is the right border of the heart this is formed by the right atrium okay this is left ventricle that is the right ventricle right ventricle here this is the right ventricle here okay this is the left ventricle okay so we got that now we'll go again so we got the x-ray so again try right atrium from the right margin of the heart apex of the heart is formed by the left ventricle this is the left dome the diaphragm we may get the fundic gas here from the stomach gas fundic gas this is the aortic knob or arch of the aorta underneath we'll get pulmonary trunk then we'll get left auricle and then this is the left ventricle 